Attention, EV enthusiasts, the buzz is real, Tesla shares are slipping, and all eyes are on GM as they unveil a groundbreaking zero-emission engine that could make both electric and internal combustion vehicles a thing of the past. This revolutionary technology isn't just a small tweak. It's set to redefine the automotive landscape and lead us into a fully eco-friendly future. Ready to be amazed? Let's dive into this game-changing announcement from GM CEO. Hey, if you're enjoying this so far, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. So, what's this all-new marvel? For years, GM has been on a mission to find alternatives to electric vehicles, and their journey has led them to the fascinating world of compressed air technology. Although compressed air has roots in the 19th century, think mine locomotives and vintage trams in iconic cities like Paris, it was largely forgotten as internal combustion engines took the spotlight with their immediate power. But here's the twist, in the early 2010s, the French car manufacturer Peugeot reignited the spark by envisioning a hybrid that combined compressed air with internal combustion engines. This innovative fusion retains the eco-friendliness of traditional hybrids while eliminating the need for bulky batteries. Though these prototypes didn't hit the market, they sparked significant interest across the automotive world, capturing GM's imagination. GM recognized the untapped potential of compressed air vehicles, but they also understood that serious development was crucial to compete with the might of internal combustion and the EV revolution. Buckle up, this story is just getting started. As a result, GM slowly started researching and developing compressed air technology parallel to developing EVs and internal combustion vehicles. With that in mind, it's high time for us to tackle a very practical question. How do compressed air vehicles function? Compressed air vehicles function very differently from regular engines and EVs. Instead of having a conventional piston-driven engine or an electric motor, compressed air vehicles utilize specially designed pneumatic engines, also known as compressed air engines. These engines are, from a mechanical standpoint, very similar to regular internal combustion engines. The engine uses pistons, just like petrol-powered ones do. However, unlike combustion engines, the pistons of a pneumatic motor are connected to a spring. Instead of relying on an explosion to create the piston motion, pneumatic motors introduce air into the chamber, increasing the pressure inside of it, which pushes the piston to its maximum length. The air is then released, and the spring that the piston is attached to pulls it back into its original position, thus completing the cycle. Generally speaking, the engine is very similar to internal combustion engines and can, therefore, use a wide array of technical solutions, shortening the development cycle which also drew GM toward this concept. With that in mind, it's time to answer the most intriguing question, what are the benefits of compressed air versus EVs and ICE vehicles? Well, the most notable benefit is, of course, the fact that it is 100% pollution-free. It's just pressurized air, meaning that there is no environmental damage being done while it functions. As a result, compressed air engines solve one of the biggest issues regular combustion engines have and that is direct pollution of the environment. Compressed air engines also beat out EVs in this regard, as making a compressed air engine is far cheaper and requires no rare earth materials, much unlike batteries or electric motors. Not to mention that powering EVs is also not quite green, as the grid is still mostly reliant on fossil fuels to produce electricity. Speaking of making compressed air engines, another key benefit over internal combustion engines is the cost of production. Since compressed air engines endure considerably lower pressures than gasoline or diesel engines, producing them means that there will be a lesser need for strong and hardened steel or metal. This makes them both more economically viable as well as more eco-friendly to produce in larger quantities. And while the differences might not be as substantial compared to EVs, they're still there. Oh, and also, it goes without saying that the running costs of compressed air engines are simply unrivaled. Compressed air is much cheaper than fuel or electricity and it's also much easier to acquire. Not to mention that these engines will be 100% future-proof, as they don't waste anything, they just use pressurized air that, after it exits the chamber, remains structurally unchanged. However, as potent as they sound, compressed air engines have a few drawbacks that keep them from being developed and used on a wider scale. Are there any drawbacks to this technology? Unfortunately, there are a few blaring issues that arise from using compressed air engines, which made them quite situational and even borderline useless in the past. The first problem is the fact that compressed air engines are extremely underpowered. Pressurized air has a very low energy density, which considerably lowers its potency. Plus, 
Due to them having light components and not producing high amounts of pressure, the torque of such engines is extremely lackluster, making them much less usable in the real world. The engine also has to spin at quite high RPMs, which, considering it's a fully mechanical contraption, leads to excessive wearing of components. Furthermore, GM has also found a way to extend the vehicle's range. How? By turning the vehicle's chassis into one large compressed air reservoir. However, this requires the vehicle to be specifically developed with compressed air engines in mind. This includes specific reinforcements or even the usage of composite materials, such as fiber-reinforced thermoplastics. This allows the vehicle to retain exceptionally low weight while also being much safer than using regular high-pressure tanks, as crashing and rupturing the reservoir won't lead to an explosion, no matter what. When will this technology be implemented? Well, the answer to that question is incredibly complex. However, there is a very solid possibility of these engines entering mass production in the next few years. This is because, as can be concluded, GM has truly invested itself in making this engine a reality. They keep researching and developing solutions to many existing problems and are incredibly devoted to creating a truly fantastic product that would revolutionize the automotive world entirely. Plus, the general mechanical familiarity and similarity to internal combustion engines allow GM to develop such engines much faster than if they were doing it from scratch. That said, it would be naive of us to believe that GM is doing this out of the goodness of its heart. As it is not, GM understands all too well that the days of internal combustion engines are numbered, and they still don't have a foothold in the EV market. As a result, GM is looking for a way to create a new market of vehicles that would allow them to dominate other car manufacturers while also making obsolete both internal combustion and EVs to further secure their hypothetical position as the leader of the new automotive age. But as good as this all sounds, this isn't the first time a major manufacturer tried implementing compressed air into vehicles. As we've already mentioned, Peugeot, about 10 or so years ago, made a hybrid version of their Peugeot 2008 crossover. However, Instead of using electric energy, this vehicle combined an internal combustion engine with compressed air. The result was a powertrain that merged the power and torque of an internal combustion engine with the ecological component of compressed air engines. This said powertrain was able to achieve a whopping 120 miles per gallon. Unfortunately, though, Peugeot silently abandoned this project soon after it was conceived. Despite the very good initial results, there were no explanations given. Except that Peugeot said they didn't find the project profitable enough, which frankly doesn't make sense. So, why did they abandon it? It's anyone's guess. However, we believe that it has to do with large oil companies, as such an engine, developed and produced on a large scale, could potentially run them out of business. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.